Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this What is Seminar. Today, we will talk about what is Ramsey theory. And we have with us uh, Manuel Silva from Universidade Nova de Lisboa. Well, Manuel, uh, thank you so much for, for accepting our invitation and for being here with us. And uh, it's up to you. you. You can start. Okay, thank you for the invitation to speak in this, uh, in this uh, seminar. Um, I will share. Uh, please feel free to interrupt again if something is not uh, clear. Uh, use your microphone. So, uh, so I will try to describe uh, uh, what is uh, uh, Ramsey theory, which uh, uh, today is an, an important area, uh, a very active area in combinatorics, and I will try to to tell uh, uh, the story of, the, of this subject. So I will start with the uh, Ramsey theorem, uh, so, uh, which uh, is a result about graphs, or we'll see about uh, uh, families of sets. Then we will see uh, results uh, uh, in another context, in the, in the integers. Uh, we'll see what is van der Waarden uh, uh, result in this context. In the, in the third part of the talk, I will describe uh, Ramsey type results in uh, combinatorics uh, on infinite words. So Ramsey theory uh, looks for uh, unavoidable regularity inside the large combinatorial structures. Uh, we can say, uh, as Theodore Bontz, the mathematician Theodore uh, said, complete disorder is impossible. So if we have a, a large combinatorial structure, we should, we should find a, a small uh, sub, substructures which are regular. So the, the two most uh, influential results in Ramsey theory are most probably the original result from Ramsey, Ramsey theorem for complete graphs, and uh, uh, the van der Waarden uh, theorem, which uh, uh, a regularity result uh, uh, about uh, arithmetic progressions inside partitions of uh, natu the natural numbers. So we start with, with the original Ramsey, uh, Ramsey result. Um, so uh, we need uh, to, to define first what uh, the concept, the context, so what, what is a graph. So we say that a simple graph G is, uh, is a pair V, E, G, where V is, is the set of vertices and E, G are the set of edges. So a, an edge is a pair of vertices. So um, we have a set of vertices and then we have uh, uh, edges between the vertices. An R coloring of the edges of, uh, of a graph G is just a, a function uh, from the set of edges to, uh, to a finite set. In this case, an R coloring, cor cor uh, coloring we, can, we give uh, to each edge of the, our graph a color between uh, one and, uh, and R. The original result from Ramsey from uh, 1930 uh, was uh, motivated by a problem in, uh, in logic and um, Ramsey proved the, proved the following. So he proved that uh, uh, given positive integers uh, K and R and an R coloring of the edges of the complete graph. So the complete graph, uh, we have uh, N vertices and uh, uh, the number of edges is, is uh, uh, full. Uh, every, vert every pair of vertices uh, um, is, uh, uh, the, the edge between these two vertices belongs to our graph. <laughs> And so if we have the complete graph with a, a large number of vertices, so uh, we have our, our vertices depending on the, these two constants, these k and, k and r, 
we can always uh, find a monochromatic subgraph uh, for the k. So here monochromatic means we can always find uh, k vertices such that the, the edges between these k vertices have the, the same color. So uh, the, the, the simplest case uh, we, uh, is, uh, for example, it's, if we have six vertices, so in a party with six people, uh, it's uh, three of them know each other. So three, uh, there should be three persons which uh, uh, know each other. So, uh, or uh, three persons that are complete strangers. So this is equivalent of saying that this is the, the two colors because we have uh, uh, each pair of persons know each other or uh, are strangers. And we can say that uh, to find three persons that uh, um, know each other or are complete strangers, we need six, six uh, vertices, okay? Of course, if we want to find uh, four persons that know each other or are complete strangers, these numbers should be much larger. We can, uh, we can ask uh, how large are these Ramsey numbers. So let's, uh, let, let's say we can uh, we want to find the lower bound for uh, uh, RK. So we fix two colors. So let's say RK is uh, RK2. And we can, uh, we can prove that uh, RK is uh, at, at least uh, uh, exponential. So RK should be larger than uh, two power k over two. And uh, uh, this, type of, uh, this, this type of bound uh, is obtained by the probabilistic method, which is a, a technique that was popular, popularized by the Hungarian mathematician Paul Erdos, and uh, which is very powerful, very simple and very powerful to in combinatorics. Um, so let's uh, let's see what is this method very briefly. Uh, so we fix the, the number of vertices n to be two uh, power k over two, and we consider the complete graph uh, uh, over these uh, vertices. We choose uh, a color for each edge to be red or blue by flipping a coin, okay? So uh, each, uh, each uh, hedge will have, uh, with probability one half will be red and with probability one half, one half will be blue. Then we can, uh, we can uh, uh, see that the probability that uh, uh, if we have a, a set with K, uh, the subgraph with K elements, the probability of all edges having the same color is this number one half uh, power two and uh, k choose two minus one. And we have n choose n uh, choose k uh, subsets of uh, k elements. So if we multiply uh, the binom this binomial coefficient and k by, by the, this probability, we get uh, uh, an upper bound uh, for having uh, a monochromatic uh, case of graph. And uh, we can easily uh, see that uh, this product is less than one. And uh, we conclude by uh, uh, Erdos magic that uh, uh, we can avoid having all these uh, uh, subgraphs being monochromatic. And so there must be some two coloring of the complete graph with no monochromatic subgraphs of order k. Okay, so this is uh, this is a technique that uh, uh, will show that show us that uh, uh, we need uh, we need uh, these these Ramsey numbers have to be uh, exponential large. Okay, is it clear? Can Let's, uh, let's see a, a, an infinite version of uh, Ramsey theorem. Uh, 
that we will uh, will new use. So I, I will try to sh to show several e examples of from state uh, type results. That's the the point for now. So um, let's for formulate an infinite version of from state theorem. Actually, this version it's the the original Ramsey version. And so given uh, uh, any set uh, S um, and the natural, this, this set uh, is an, an infinite set, in fact, um, and, uh, and some natural number K, uh, we call S brackets uh, power K will denote the set of K elements subsets of S. So if K equals two, uh, the, these two subsets uh, uh, corresponds to the edges of the previous uh, simple graph. But of course, here we can have a k equals three. We will have uh, uh, triples of uh, points or vertices. We can have uh, k equal to anything. Okay, we'll use uh, uh, k equal four, for example. Uh, so the, the infinite Ramsey theorem uh, tell us the following. Given an infinite set S, again, we have uh, uh, K and, uh, and R positive integers. And then we will color the, the all K subsets. So for example, uh, fix K equal to three, we call we color all triples of points, for example. And uh, Ramsey theorem uh, tells us that we can always find uh, an infinite subset uh, H of S such that all K subsets inside H uh, will have the same color. Okay, so this is the, the infinite uh, version of, of Ramsey theorem. Uh, Ergos and Sekeres uh, obtain the following result using Ramsey theorem, like a geometric re result uh, that says the following. So suppo suppose we have um, uh, a large number of or a large number of uh, points in the in the plane. So suppose we have C uh, C n points in the plane uh, in general position. So this means that. Uh, um, we don't have three points uh, collinear. So every three points, uh, no three points are in the same line. Uh, and we want to, uh, to prove that uh, we can find n points, n points in this uh, set uh, that form a convex polygon. So uh, it's not clear that, uh, that we, if, if, if we can get, uh, imagine you have, uh, uh, 100 points in the plane. Uh, is it clear that we have uh, uh, 10 points in convex position? We can take, for example, the uh, the the convex that contains uh, the set, but maybe maybe the set uh, uh, is. Um, is inside a triangle, for example. So it's it's not clear that uh, if we if we can get or no, for example, ten points uh, in convex uh, for, uh, forming a convex polygon, uh, given for example one hundred one hundred points, we will use the Ramsey theorem to prove uh, this result. So we we define a coloring for uh, quadruples of points. We say that uh, four uh, four points, four given points are have the color blue. If uh, no point, none of none of them is inside the triangle formed by the other three. And we say that uh, these four points are red. Otherwise, so this is uh, this is the, the the coloring. So by Ramsey theorem. Uh, the fi finite version for quadruples. There will be a monochromatic subgraph. Uh, this is this is in fact it's not a subgraph; it's an hypergraph with n, n vertices. And it's easy to see that the color cannot be uh, red. And uh, so 
because it is blue, the points are in a convex position. So here, in the, maybe it's interesting to note that uh, uh, the, the, the reason why Ramsey uh, was useful is because this con convex position uh, is a local property. So if a set is not uh, in convex position, or I mean, if the if given endpoints, if they are not, uh, if they do not form a, co uh, a convex polygon in the plane, then it's clear that uh, there should be uh, one point which is inside some tri triangle formed by the, the other points, okay? Um, another example, uh, simple example, let's prove like this result that uh, shows up in, uh, in the first year of calculus. We want to prove that every infinite sequence, say n of real numbers, contains an infinite monotone increasing or decreasing subsequence. Uh, so I claim that the correct uh, proof or the best proof is using uh, Ramsey theorem. So we just need to use Ramsey theorem for k equals two. So we define a coloring for each pair of indices, a j uh, in the following way, if a is less than j, we say that uh, the, the color of this pair is blue if the order in the sequence is the same and red otherwise. And then it is just uh, uh, applying a Ramsey theorem, the, the monochromatic infinite graph uh, will will be certainly a, a monotone subsequence. Okay. So um, everyone is uh, still with me. See, yes. Yes, yes, it's okay. Bro. Okay. <laughs> so we we move now uh, to. Uh, Partitions of uh, integers. So it's this is like a little bit of uh, coloring number theory. So because we are General, sorry, to yes. maybe yes. I can ask you to uh, to repeat the, the, your arguments um, on the um, the convex polygons. Okay. So uh, again, we have the. Um, you mean uh, when I have uh, so yeah, it's uh, and uh, mm -hmm. which graph are, are uh, what are the edges here and what is the graph? Okay, okay. So this is this in fact is uh, an hypergraph because the, the these uh, the edges are quadruples. Mm -hmm. So we are coloring here the sets of uh, uh, quadruples of points. So every for every set of four points, mm -hmm. this is called also an, an hyper edge because uh, you have a set with four, with uh, order four, okay? Mm -hmm. So you will say that four points are, have the color blue uh, if, uh, if they are in convex, if they form a, a convex uh, uh, quadrilateral, okay? Mm -hmm. And you say that they are red. These four points are red if one of them is inside the triangle formed by the other three. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then you, you apply Ramsey theorem and uh, what Ramsey theorem gives you is uh, if the number of vertices is large enough, uh, gives you uh, N points such that uh, uh, every uh, subset of uh, order four, every subset, uh, every four, uh, every quadruple has mm -hmm. the same color. So it should be all blue or all red. Mm -hmm. But it's clear that it cannot be all red mm -hmm. beca because uh, if you have five points, uh, it's clear that four of them sh should be in, uh, in convex position. Mm -hmm. So it cannot be red. So it should be blue. And if it is blue, uh, if all uh, f uh, if uh, all uh, subsets of four points are, are in convex position, then the the, the global set okay. is also in global position. And that's the, the this part uh, where I where I emphasize uh, 
that uh, this is like uh, convex position is like this local property. If you if you you just to prove that endpoints are in convex uh, form a convex polygon, you you just need to to check uh, locally that uh, every four points form a, a okay. convex quadrilateral. Okay. Okay. So now we. We change a little bit uh, uh, subject, and we are going to consider partitions of the integers. Okay, so uh, the first result in this context was ob uh, obtained by Isai Shur in 1917, uh, where he proved that uh, given a finite coloring of the positive integers, so now we are uh, co uh, coloring the the integers, for example, with two colors, there are, uh, for example, odd and even numbers, odd are the blue and uh, even are the red or any type of color. And uh, the, the, this result says that we can always find three positive integers having the same color, uh, such that uh, uh, they are a solution of of this linear equation. So x plus y equals z. OK, so the, the, the proof of this result follows from Ramsey theorem. Uh, Schur used this result to, to prove the finite field version of Fermat last theorem. So he was trying, he was, uh, trying to prove Fermat, but uh, so he considered the, the finite field version. And uh, this result. Uh, this combinatorial result is uh, important for, for that. Uh, more generally, we can say that an equation, so here we have a guy like this linear equation, x plus y equals zeta. Um, we, we say that an equation is regular if given a finite parti partition of, uh, of the n, we can find a solution inside one of the partition sets. So this means like the, it's an uh, the equation is not destroyed by the the partition okay so we 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 find a solution inside some of the partition sets if this is the case we say that uh, the equation is uh, regular uh, rado uh, gave a criterion to decide when a given linear equation is regular so linear equations are easy to to decide if they so it's possible to obtain a similar results for all linear equations. Um, but for example, it's an open problem to decide if uh, this quadratic equation, like this uh, x squared plus y squared equals z squared, it's an open problem to decide if, uh, if it is regular. So for example, we, for three colors, uh, the, the, the result was confirmed by using uh, uh, an enormous amount of computation. So it was proved that uh, uh, if you partition the natural numbers in uh, three sets, three sets, three subsets, in one of these three subsets, you will always find an equation of this type. So uh, you can find uh, uh, three integers, x, y, and z, uh, belonging to one of these sets such that uh, this equation uh, is satisfied, but it's an open problem. For example, for to to do it for, with more colors. Okay, so it seems for two colors, difficult to. Is it obvious for so, sorry? Is it obvious for two colors? Is it obvious? Yes, uh, because uh, you can uh, you can uh, I guess do it uh, if you prove that this is true for. Uh, uh, the first 10 numbers and this should be true for the first 10, 10 numbers you just have to to check uh, uh, for example you start maybe with one and two and then one plus two plus four dollars it's five i mean you 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 can check it i don't know if it is obvious obvious it's it is not but uh, mm -hmm. but you can reduce to to a finite problem meaning uh, you can find some uh, some bound. Maybe ten is uh, is uh, not enough, but uh, maybe you can do it by hand. Maybe you can use a computer. But it should be 
relatively uh, easy to do it. Maybe not by hand, but, uh, but with three colors, it's like a huge number of uh, amount of computation that, that, uh, that I, 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 uh, I, I saw. Okay. A anyway, but the, the interesting part is to, to, to have like some kind of method to solve this, uh, this uh, type of problem uh, in general like for any number of colors, okay? And uh, that part is not, uh, is not known, how to deal with these equations. Okay, so, uh, Van der Waarden theorem. Uh, uh, it's, in, it's somehow a, a generalization of uh, this uh, uh, problem. And uh, Van der Waarden theorem gives us a regularity uh, of the following type. So given a finite partitions of the natural numbers, so we have the natural numbers as a union of uh, uh, A1, AR, so R sets, it's, this is like an R coloring. Um, and we, we know that, uh, or the result says that one of the partition sets contains the arithmetic progressions with the arbitrary large number of elements. So we will an arithmetic progressions here, it's always finite. So we can find some B and some C such that uh, B, B plus C, B plus uh, two, uh, two times C, et cetera, B plus K times C for, for every K, we can find an, arith an arithmetic progression that is contained in some of the, the these sets. So this is like, a, this is a Ramsey type result again, because, uh, um, we have uh, uh, for any R coloring, so the coloring can be very conf confused or very complex, but we can find some type of regularity, some type of disc, some cadence, you know, some type of uh, an arithmetic progression is something uh, very regular. All these elements should have the same color. Okay, so this is under bar. Um, Similarly, Prove then a very important generalization of this result much later. So these results of Van der Waarden is from 1927, and so like uh, 50 years later, Simeradi proved the following. So first uh, we need a definition. So given a set of positive integers a, the upper density uh, is defined by uh, this quotient. So we we divide. Uh, we count the number of elements of phi inside the initial interval one to n, and you, we divide by n. And if we we have like the, the probability of el an element of phi, uh, bill, uh, um, uh, prob probability of an element of uh, phi uh, uh, being in a, in a random set. So. Anyway, so if we if we make n if we, if we if we take n to go to infinity, we obtain like this density of the the set, upper density of of the set, and similarly prove that uh, any set with uh, large enough, or meaning in this case with positive upper density, contains uh, arbitrary long arithmetic progressions. So here we have a partition in Van der Waarden. Here we just have one set, but to, uh, we know that it, if, it, if this set is large enough, it should contain like this regularity, this arithmetic progression regularity. So this is uh, the result. Um, at this, uh, after this result of similarity, I think it was uh, again Paul Erdos that uh, asked uh, uh, what can be said about the prime numbers? Uh, uh, is it true that uh, that uh, they con uh, the prime numbers contain uh, a, a large arithmetic progressions or arithmetic progressions with uh, with as many elements as we want? And uh, here the point is that the prime numbers uh, they are relatively sparse, or, or at least they are sparse for uh, similarity theorem. So if we if we if we name p n to be the uh, the number of primes in the initial interval one n, uh, 
uh, it's known, it's, uh, it's an important, it's the density result for the primes. We know that these, the number of primes in the, in the initial interval is uh, uh, asymptotal, asymptotically n over log n. Okay, so this implies that the set of primes has uh, upper density zero. So because if we define this number of primes by n, we get a, fu a function that uh, one over log n that uh, goes to zero. So uh, the primes are a little bit sparse, so we cannot use similarity theorem. But uh, in 2000, 2000, 2004, Ben Green and Terence Tau proved that, uh, in fact, uh, um, the primes uh, contain arithmetic progressions of uh, as many elements as, uh, as we want. So this is um, a regularity result for the primes, which was uh, uh, motivated by similarity uh, results. Okay, so now um, we move to, to a third uh, con contest, which is uh, we are going to talk uh, uh, about uh, infinite and finite words, okay? Uh, because uh, I will show a result uh, that I was able to obtain uh, in this contest, a Ramsey type uh, result. So that's uh, what are we well what we are doing now. So first, a few definitions. Uh, let let A be a finite set that will be referred as uh, an alphabet. Uh, sequences uh, W uh, W one W two finite or in infinite uh, flatters from this alphabet A are called words. Uh, we call uh, we call a star. Let a star be the set of all finite words. A star is uh, is the free monoid generated by the the alphabet by the set uh, the finite set A with the, the operation. Uh, uh, the operation here is the concatenation of words. So if we have two words U and V, the product of U and V is just to concatenate uh, uh, these two words, okay? Uh, the empty word being the, the identity. The set of one-way infinite words over A is denoted by A omega. Uh, formally, infinite words are mappings from the natural numbers to, to our uh, set A. Uh, finally, we say that uh, U is a factor, so finite word U is the factor of an infinite word W, if uh, uh, U is the sequence of consecutive uh, uh, elements in W, so U is WY, WY plus one, until some, some, some element. Uh, let's see two, two examples. Uh, here it's useful to to use uh, morphisms uh, in uh, A star. So if we have some uh, morphism from A star to itself uh, that respects the, the product or the, the concatenation of words, we can use like these kind of morphisms to construct to, um, infinite words. For example, the two Morse word can be constructed by the, the, the morphism phi uh, which is defined, we just need to define the image of uh, the letters. So we are going to use an alphabet with two letters, A, A, A and B. We just need to, to define the, the image of A and the image of B. So the image of A uh, will be AB and the image of B will be BA. We can now iterate this morphism and, uh, and, uh, and construct an infinite word. So for example, uh, the image of A is AB, the image uh, of AB is ABVA, and the image of uh, ABVA is a, a word with uh, eight letters. Here it's important to note that uh, uh, each new, in each new iteration, uh, the previous word is a prefix. So for example, uh, 
we have like this uh, second in the second step the, the word a v v a uh, has a, the prefix a v which was the the previous iteration so and this uh, is uh, enough to to construct a well defined infinite word uh, making uh, uh, as many iterations as we want okay so and we get always uh, a larger and larger word so we have an infinite word this is the two morse word we can change of course the this morphism for example if we if we consider this morphism c uh, the image of a being a b and the image of b being a we obtain uh, what is called the fibonacci word these were these words they have they have very nice uh, properties uh, mm. And we will see at uh, some of them for it. So, in, an important topic in combinatorics on words is to decide which uh, which part, part patterns are avoidable or not. So sometimes the answer depends on the size of the alphabet. For example, can we avoid squares or cubes? So um, here the definition: if we have a, we define a power of order k to be uh, something of, of the form U, UK. This is uh, wrong, this should be UK. So, I mean, uh, if we have uh, the, the, the word U repeat, uh, re repeating itself. So if we have U squared, for example, we have U and, uh, and the, the next word uh, just after U is again U. So, this is a square. So, for example, the word papa, because uh, you have a, a repetition of uh, the term PA. Okay. So, the question now is can we avoid uh, these uh, periodicities? Can we, have, can we avoid having uh, um, a word uh, uh, repeating itself? For example, a cons two consecutive words being uh, the same. Um, in fact, the two Morse word is an example of an infinite binary word which avoids cubes. The, the, uh, does not contain three equal consecutive blocks. So, um, so this proves that uh, the partner uh, U power three is avoidable in a two letter alphabet. And to prove this, it's, it's enough to, to check that uh, this morphism phi uh, preserves the, this property. So if you, it, it does not contain cubes, the image should not uh, contain cubes. And this is in fact true. And uh, that is the reason why the two more sword avoids cubes. Um, here uh, is an egg, uh, first example of uh, Ramsey. So what I'm trying to to, to look for now is a Ramsey type result in this uh, context uh, of combinatorics on, uh, of infinite words. And uh, uh, somehow th this uh, old result was an inspiration for the, the result I will talk about. And this is a result, uh, a result from Chirchov. And this uh, tells us the following. So, here we, we, we need to, to define what it means for a word to be n divided. So a finite word uh, u is n divided. If, uh, if the word admits an n decomposition, so the word u can be written as v1, v2, vn, such that uh, any permutation of these blocks, these n, n blocks, uh, uh, produce uh, a word which is uh, greater in le lexicographic order than uh, U. So here uh, uh, our alphabet uh, is ordered. So you can, for example, choose the our alphabet can be a set of integers. And you have an order. So the result says that given a, a finite order alphabet A and positive integers and K, there exists a, a large enough integer S such that each finite word, W of uh, length uh, large enough, 
contains either a factor which is a k power, uh, a periodic, if you a periodicity for the k, if you want, or a factor which is uh, n divided. So this is uh, um, these results which uh, we can compare with the, the one we will obtain. Okay, so now I, I propose or introduce um, a, a dual uh, notion of repetition. So why not, why not uh, look for anti-repetitions instead? That, uh, that is the, 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 what, are, what, what we are trying to do. So let me define more uh, formally what I mean by anti-repetitions. So repetitions meaning means a power. So anti-repetitions means an anti-power. So I, an anti-power of order k is, uh, is a part, partner, partner of the form v1, v2, vk with uh, all vA distinct and having the same length. So for example, we have here a word, this word u, which is one zero, one one, zero one, zero zero. This is an example of an anti-power of order k, because um, uh, you have like uh, these four blocks which have length two, and all of them are distinct. Okay, so this is an anti-power of order of order k. Um, there are hot to be much more anti-powers of order k compared to to the number of powers. So this seems at least uh, reasonable to 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 claim. And for the reason we expected, it should be easier to find the anti-powers. And uh, the original question that motivated uh, this work was, uh, I was just looking to, for, to these two, uh, two more infinite words and uh, asking myself, is it true or, or not that uh, there should be 100 or 1,000 consecutive uh, same length blocks, uh, all distinct. So with uh, no two blocks uh, the same. So this was the motivation and uh, we shall answer this, uh, this question uh, shortly. Uh, so this is like the, the Ramsey uh, result that, uh, that we could prove. It says the following, let uh, W be an infinite word that avoids anti-powers of order K. So I have an infinite word such that uh, if you have K blocks, uh, um, if you have K consecutive blocks of the same length, uh, necessarily two of them are equal, are the same. So if you have uh, uh, such an infinite word, then these results tells us that uh, there should be some finite word u uh, such that it, this word u repeats periodically somewhere uh, or as many times as you want uh, in, uh, in, in the infinite word. So uh, a word that avoids anti-powers uh, Will avoid, uh, uh, will not avoid uh, uh, periodicity. So, will not avoid powers. So, uh, uh, we can say a corollary every infinite word W admits powers or anti powers of fairly, fairly large uh, order. Uh, the re this result tells us something new, uh, admittedly not very useful, about the decimal expansion of uh, any number, for example, of pi. Uh, it, we believe that uh, pi should be a normal number, so we should be able to find any combination of digits inside pi, but we know very little about, uh, about that. We, it's not even known, for example, if the some digit, for example, five, uh, is it true that it, uh, it will appear an infinite number of times? It's not even, not even this is, is known. But uh, so it should be true that uh, it's believed, it's conjectured, maybe by Borel and Borel, that uh, pi should be a normal number. So it should have uh, powers or anti-powers, but uh, we don't know which one, which one, 
but probably the two of them, the powers and the anti-powers. And uh, I claim that uh, it should not be that hard to prove that it contains anti-powers because it seems easier to, to do it. Okay. Uh, now we we need uh, to 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 answer like the the, the original question about the two more word. We need uh, some uh, some definitions. Uh, which are uh, important def definitions in these contexts. So let me define uh, a word uh, W, an infinite word W, to be recurrent if all, all its factors show up uh, twice. Well, of course, this implies that every factor repeats itself an infinite number of times. We also need a stronger notion of recurrence uh, so let uh, FW be the set of factors in, of an infinite word uh, W. Uh, an infinite word W is uh, uniformly recurrent, also called almost periodic. If for every factor in this infinite word U, uh, there is a constant L, which depends on U, such that every block uh, V in our infinite word, which has length at least L, contains U as a factor. So this is the same as saying that the distance between two consecutive occurrences of a given factor is bounded, bounded by this uh, by this L. So we don't have to expect uh, expect too much time to find another occurrence of the, a block. Frunstenberg proved that uh, uh, given an infinite word there exists a, a uniformly recurrent word. It seems we lost you, Manuela. I'm not hearing you. The, knowing the structure of the class of uniformly uh, recurrent Manuela. words is uh, Manuela, very you lost yes you lost you lost the connection from the beginning of this of this slide so maybe you can repeat from the beginning this slide uniform okay, okay so this this, this you, you finish yes this one we we, we lost okay. the connection okay thank you mm -hmm. so uh, we we know now what is a, a uniform recurrent uh, word and uh, Furstenberg proved the, the following result. Uh, he proved that uh, given an infinite word W, uh, not necessarily recurrent, uh, there exists an uniformly recurrent word X, such that all factors in X uh, belong to, to the initial word. So it, this the result somehow shows that uh, 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 understanding the structure of the un uniformly recurrent words uh, is fundamental to understand uh, the structure of all uh, words, all infinite words. So the initial proof of this result was obtained uh, in the context of ergodic theory, but it's possible to, to give a purely combinatorial argument. Uh, periodic words. So periodic words are words uh, u to infinity. This means that you have some block u, and then you repeat the, the same block uh, an infinite number of times. So this is uh, uh, a periodic word. There, there are examples of uh, non-interesting uh, uh, uniformly recurrent words, but, uh, but they are in fact uniformly recurrent. Um, many well studied infinite words are uniformly recurrent, the two Morse word, Fibonacci word, uh, etc. Or observe that a periodic uniformly recurrent word, and a, and a periodic uh, uniformly recurrent word, cannot contain arbitrary large powers. The reason is that uh, if you have uh, some word U repeating itself uh, as many times as uh, <laughs> she wants, uh, then to, you will have to wait uh, 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 an unbounded time to, to, to find uh, uh, occurrences of other word V, okay? Because uh, U was repeating itself. So uh, a, a, 
you will have to 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 find the word the word v you will have to wait uh, to, uh, an unbounded time so uh, an aperiodic uniform recurrent word cannot uh, um, contain a factor repeating itself uh, many times uh, and this uh, using our previous uh, Ramsey type result this shows that in any aperiodic uniform re, uh, recurrent word contains entry powers of arbitrary large order. Okay, so these results gives an answer to our original question concerning the, the two Morse word. So the two Morse word contains entry powers of arbitrary large order. Uh, I, I, I will finish with. Uh, with a finite version of this uh, it seems we lost Manuel again. I don't know if you can hear me, Manuel. We are not listening to you. I think he left the, the I think he stopped sharing, maybe he's trying to uh, connect again. I don't know if you can hear me when well. See the sharing of it? See okay. See. We are back. Hey, I'm We're back. back. Aqui estou na faculdade e, pelos vistos, a internet não está muito, muito boa. Já estou outra vez a partir. Não estamos a ver o, a, a tela. Estão-me a ouvir agora, sim? Sim, sim. Sim, Estou a tentar partilhar outra vez. Fazer com a internet, com... Ok. 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 Yes. Ok. So, uh, just I, I would like to finish with this uh, finest version of uh, the power anti powers result, uh, which. Uh, Seems that when it starts to share, it counts for this number. So, Manuel, I'm sorry. Can you start from the beginning for this slide? Okay, you can hear me now. See, see. And when it starts to share, the, it seems like, like the internet having some difficulties. Now we mm -hmm. are, we, we can watch your, your screen. Maybe let's try again. So let's, let's try again. Sorry about, about no, that. It seems that when you try to, to share, so your internet is mm -hmm. slow. Okay. Okay. So now it's okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. ah. No, it seems it doesn't handle with, with both Manuel and, and the, the slides. Okay, or, a, or an anti power of order R. And we can you uh, and we get we can get the lower bound and the in the upper bound for for this number n k k, which guarantees the the existence of a power or or anti power of order or order k. Okay, so 
Uh, I'd like to finish uh, suggesting that you should prove your own Ramsey type results. <laughs> I don't know if Morel, are you there? I don't know if this silence is because he has finished. See. Okay. Uh, Hello. Uh, well, we have some difficulties okay. in your last slide. Uh, you could read, okay. but you could not hear completely. But since this was stopping all the time, I, I, I didn't want to interrupt you. Okay, so I I can just say that the last the last result was like the finite version of the power anti power uh, uh, result, and uh, it says that uh, a large enough uh, finite word should contain uh, a k power or an r anti power, and uh, and then the the next slide was the end, and I was suggesting that uh, all of you should try to to prove your Ramsey type uh, theorem because uh, there should be Ramsey type uh, results in uh, in every subject of mathematics okay and thank you for your attention sorry for these uh, internet uh, uh, connection problems and uh, feel free to 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 ask uh, uh, anything if uh, if you if you want okay many thanks thank you. we we thank you uh, this nice talk. I don't know if someone in the audience has something to, to comment to Manuel. Indeed, I have a, a question, Manuel, maybe it is a silly one, but uh, people is concerned about the existence of arithmetic progressions of, of, of some sense, in, of some color or something like that. But why the arithmetic progression? Let, let's say, for instance, why don't we search about, uh, why don't we concern about geometric progressions? It is an equivalent problem or it is a irrelevant problem? For instance, looking for in a, in a um, coloring of, of the integers, having a geometric uh, progression of the same color. Is this interesting or is equivalent to, to, to the search of a, a, such an arithmetic progression? It can be redu reduced to the arithmetic progression problem because you just have to consider, for example, the powers of two. Okay. Because uh, uh, an arithmetic progression inside the powers of two is uh, uh, is uh, the uh, um, a geometric progression as you want. So in a way, you can reduce one problem to to the other uh, by if you look at the the powers, okay. Uh, why why the arithmetic progressions? Uh, I don't know. I mean, Van der Waarden proved like this result, uh, but he was not very interested in these results, so it was suggesting. For, but but in fact, a lot of mathematics uh, came from it. For example, this Furstenberg uh, developed a lot of ergodic theory just to. To, to give uh, a new proof of semi-ready results. I mean, it's, uh, uh, they are just uh, hard problems, uh, I, I guess, to, to, to find uh, an arithmetic uh, progression structure. It's, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not easy, so it produces good, mathema good mathematics. But um, we can try something else. Uh, I, uh, for example, in this uh, result, I, I, I was able to prove powers, anti-powers, like this notion of uh, anti-powers seems like a, a strange notion, but uh, maybe, maybe it, but it's something that uh, you can ask. But So maybe there are other uh, type of regularities that could be interesting, but the arithmetic progressions is, it, it's related to, it, to this periodic periodicity, right? Like uh, okay. something that is repeating itself in the, in terms of uh, um, symbolic dynamics. You can reduce it uh, to iterating some map uh, and uh, and being uh, inside the, 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 some orbit, right? So it's uh, it it. it it's uh, an interesting regularity, but maybe there are other other regularities also uh, 
good to look forward. I don't know. I don't know if someone has some question to Manuel. I have a question. That was a very nice presentation. Uh, my you. question is, are there some interesting examples of sets, unlike the primes, which don't have positive upper density, that do have this upper density and that are of interest? So, uh, 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 sorry, say it again, a set we did. So, so the primes don't have positive upper density, but are there uh -huh. interesting subsets, infinite subsets of integers that do have uh, positive upper density? That Semerides theorem applies to, presumably. Mm. Ah, okay, okay. Mm. I see natural sets. I, it's uh, in terms of number theory, of course, all all sets of squares. Everything is very sparse, right? So most of the sets that uh, we normally de uh, deal in number theory, they are they are sparse. So uh, we cannot use uh, similarity similarity theorem. But so. I cannot see an example of a, of a set uh, with, uh... okay, no, I don't see an example. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we need these this finer versions, like mm -hmm. out here. Yeah, I, I, know, I know that, uh, uh, if I remember well, Terence Tau and Ben Green, they, they they were trying to prove that uh, uh, the density n over log n uh, should be enough to 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 get the arithmetic progressions. I don't know if uh, this is somehow related with your question, but but they were not able to prove it. Mm -hmm. So in in the end, the the they used some uh, uh, particular properties of the primes. They did not. They didn't want to use them. But they were forced to use properties of the primes. So the, the initial goal was to 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 prove something like uh, uh, actually there is a conjecture of uh, Paul Hardus which says that if a set uh, uh, is such that the inverse is is a divergent ser series like the prime numbers, if you if you sum the inverse of primes. This is a divergent uh, series. This should be enough. Uh, that was the Ergo's claim. This should be enough for uh, um, having arithmetic progressions. But uh, Terence uh, Tao and Ben Green were not able to prove this, uh, this very strong conjecture. Uh, and they were using properties of the primes. The funny part is that uh, the properties they were using in the beginning uh, so there was uh, a, a problem with one of the results, so a mistake was, uh, but in the end they were able to, to use part of the, the, the result. Okay. I don't know if someone else has something to, to say. Well. Wow. If not, uh, I would like to thank you all again for being here. It is a pleasure to have you here. And of course, thank you again, Manuel, for, for this talk and for his time. It is a pleasure, Manuel, to have you here. And I hope to see you one of these days uh, physically here at UBR. And uh, that's it for today. Um, it was a pleasure, as I told you, to, to see you. And we will have a new What is Seminar in July, 21 July. Which is which has the title "What is the Langlands Program?" Manuel already make some no, mention to the Langlands Program, and the next "What is Seminar" is about this this last program. So that's all for today. Thank you all for coming, and hope to see you one of these days. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. bye. Okay, Manuel, now I will stop.